What's up guys, you guys know the deal. Top five solo lane gods to play in ranked right now with their builds plus the honorable mentions. Now there's a huge patch coming out next Tuesday and there's gonna be lots of changes to the solo lane. So I really didn't want this guy to be like a significant other where it's here this week and then disappears the next. So most of this advice and these gods that I'm gonna be talking about are still gonna be really good in the next patch, especially with the builds that I'm gonna be showing you guys with maybe a couple exceptions. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Coming in at number five, we have Osiris. So Osiris, I'm putting him at number five because I think he falls off really hard late game, but in most of your ranked games, you're going to be able to dominate in that early to mid game. You have basically no bad lanes, so you don't really have to worry too much. The build is pretty much the same every game. I've been messing around a little bit with Bluestone on this character, but for the most part, Death Toll, Tier 1 Round Shield, if you're against a physical, is just such a strong start. You'll get so much early game pressure, and you'll be able to um, TB back in with that Glad Shield. Now, the reason you go Glad Shield before Sovereignty on this character is you actually have so much sustain on the wave with Death Toll, and you're a character that doesn't really need to have that sustain in the laning phase because most matchups you're going to be pretty strong in. So what you're actually going to do is go Glad Shield into Sovereignty. Now, next patch, Sovereignty is getting nerfed, but I still think it's going to be the go-to pick up in the solo lane plus like i said you already have enough sustain from dust hole anyway so sovereignty you're just getting for that cheap really reliable physical defense now the rest of the build you can kind of go a little bit two different routes i like to go either oni hunter's garb and stack damage mitigation with the oni hunters into a spirit robe but i also think bulwark is very strong on a, a character like osiris as well go into that spirit robe like i said upgrade to the death embrace at this point uh, always go dust embrace never go dust temper and then last item is a situational item most of the time spectral if they have crit you can also go nemean for that i'll just throw a spectral in because people do sometimes go crit but to be honest right now a lot of people are going the kin size build it's very strong after 9.5 um so nemean is just a little bit stronger but you know you can kind of go wherever you want with this last item if you feel like you're doing uh enough and you're tanky enough just go for a kin size um if not you can go like a male of renewal last item you're gonna be healing a lot if they have no anti-heal you have no other healing on their team and yeah, that's something to consider. So that's Osiris at number five. Coming in at number four, we have Tyr. Yes, Tyr. Another character that's basically good in every single lane and is also going to be still strong after the patch because his build is not really changing at all. So what you want to do with Tyr is actually go Tier 1 Earring on him just because you're pretty mana hungry. This will allow you to get a Chalice and two Health Pots if you feel like you need that in the laning phase. Honestly, as Tyr, you don't really need it usually um but that's something that you can go just for the safety aspect and then your first relic actually most of the time is just going to be blink because you want to have blink beads for the later game now if they don't have a lot of cc and you don't really need to go beads then you can consider going teleport uh blink and that's still, still very strong but this character doesn't really need to be in lane for uh it's really easy to establish pressure as this character in lane just because you can heal so much and you can just full clear a wave and then back um you're gonna be going straight into the glad shield do not finish your mana core spikes first if you're against a physical of course finish the mana core or if you're against a magical finish your, your mana core but if you're against a physical go glad shield then mana core also what you notice about osiris is you don't really you can go a mana core on him and it's definitely fine and you could probably throw that in the build but um basically all these other characters you're gonna be going mana core on um so you go glad shield into mana core what's cool about here is that he actually procs it twice in his fearless combo when you fearless and then knock them up again with your two you're gonna have two spikes off of that and it's gonna do so much damage and then of course you're procing on your blue knock up as well um next up is the relic dagger just so you can make more blink plays blue stone upgrade at this point always go blue stone brooch it is very very good and it's much much stronger than redstone especially after 9.5 and then last item usually is going to be like a spirit robe or something like that to kind of round out the build um yeah pretty pretty standard set in stone build you can maybe go witch blade for more movement speed movement speed's very strong on tier just so you can get into position to actually reposition other people with his kit um but yeah this is basically it still going to be very strong after next patch very uh highly recommend playing tier unfortunately that means there's gonna be more tiers in my rank games which is the bane of my existence but that's all good speaking of bane of my existence lancelot is up next um so this is a character you still want to go bluestone on and i think or not bluestone but soul eater soul eater is going to be getting nerfed next patch i do think it will still be viable so we'll have to wait and see a little bit but for now especially this week and you know i'll get some lancelot gameplays in coming in next week after the changes you're still going to be one going uh soul eater and a teleport with four hp pots so we'll just throw that in real quick most games you're just going to be teleport beads um you know the only thing you're going to really be, have to be beadsing is like uh, stuns and stuff like that on your horse of course you have so much cc immunity on it um but if you they're really lacking cc then you can kind of go like a teleport or horrific teleport onk if they're relying on their healing anything like that so soul eater up next i do recommend lancelot still even if soul eater isn't going to be viable next patch just because i do think this character uh doesn't need soul eater to function i think he's still really good with like a king arthur style build or a Kukulin style build um 
So yeah, going into Glad Shield. Keep in mind with all these builds as well, when you're going Soul Eater Glad Shield, you're kind of mana hungry, even with the blue buff and the MP5 from Bluestone. So what you can do is actually invest into a tier one earring. You have to see this little tier one earring is like a, a mana pot all game because it's only 400 gold and you can actually sell it for 260 gold. So you spend 140 gold for a permanent mana pot all game, which is just absolutely insane. Um, but of course, you will be building into Manticore, even on Lancelot. Um, you're gonna proc it on your root and your knockup on your two. So definitely a strong character for it. I like to go Genji's on this character still. It's very strong on stance switching characters like Lancelot. Uh, they'll have like six or seven abilities. The Genji's just gives you so much value across all of those abilities. Um, and then last item, oh well, of course, you're gonna be upgrading Bluestone at this point most of the time. Um, last item is basically situational if they have crit, spectral, uh, male or Bruno if they don't have any anti heal. Um, at this point, you kind of want to have some magical defense or some physical defense, probably. You're probably not actually that high in physical defense. So I actually have been going Boitra a little bit more and more here and there. Uh, you just do a lot of damage with it. I do think this item is, you know, it definitely needs some some buffs and stuff, but sometimes I round out my build with it and it actually feels pretty strong. But uh, also Nemean is just another really strong item that I really enjoy uh, just because you get so many props from all your items, you're going to get a lot of uh, mitigation from those stacks. So yeah, Lancelot's still going to be good. And like I said, if Soul Eater isn't viable next patch, you're basically just going to sub this out for uh, like a Sovereignty um, and you're still going to be feeling pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that is Lancelot. Oh, and I'll go ahead and mention this as well. I'll clear this real quick. Another magical defense item that I've been uh, using a lot after watching some Deathwalker gameplay is the Magical Glyph of Heartward, which gives you magical prots based on how many physical prots you can you have. Once you buy this, if you have a, like a standard uh, tank build right now, a standard bruiser build, you're going to be getting 100 magical protections from this, which is absolutely insane. The base stats plus the aura item and then plus the glyph, it usually converts to like 25, 30 physical prot. So you're going to have a 250 health, 100 magical protection item, and it's just taking up one slot, which is so strong. So definitely try and fit this into your builds if you can as well. So that was Lancelot at number three. Coming in at number two, we have Guan Yu. People should not be surprised by this uh, selection. He is very strong. If you guys watched my most recent gameplay, I talked about how strong he is and why. But I'll just go ahead and reiterate it. Um, Bluestone, most games on this. Next patch, Axe is getting buffed, so we're going to have to test that out and see how that feels on the old Guan Yizzle. If you're against a physical, go Breastplate. If you're against a magical, just go the Earring and then go straight into Manticore. Basically, every magical character in Solane, you don't really need to build like a straight-up magical defense item for them right off the bat. Um, however, on Guan Yu, actually, you'll be building into Fabless Tubes first, so that's what you would be doing. Actually, not Manticore, but nonetheless, it still works. Um, going to a teleport, tier one breastplate if you're against a physical. Let's see if I can type. Teleport, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Go straight into that breastplate into a Fey Blessed Hoops. Like I said, if you're against a magical, just reverse this order Fey Blessed Hoops into breastplate. Um, and then into a cad shield because you already have full CDR with your breastplate and your Fey Blessed Hoops. And then you go into a glad shield. Um, and you're just super strong with this. You have a ton of defense on both sides, physical and magical. Upgrade bluestone to the bluestone brooch. And um, last item, situational, kind of whatever you want and depending on the game. This is always like the item that like fills that little slot. You are overcapped when you have uh, in CDR if you have all these items, but it does not matter. You're buying Spirit Row for the passive and the damage mitigations and all that jazz, but Nemean can also work here. Um, maybe, you know, maybe you're tanky enough. Maybe you can go like a damage item. Honestly, uh, Black Throne's getting buffed next patch. So that's something you can consider. Um, maybe even like throwing in a Titan's Bane at the end of the build just because Titan's Bane is very, very strong right now, I think. Um, so something like that could even work. But for the most part, it's just going to be like a Midgardian, Anemia, and something like that. So we'll throw that in there. And of course, go Teleport Blink. Basically, Teleport Blink always on Guan. Sometimes you can maybe get away with like a Teleport Med or a Teleport Beads if they have a ton of CC and you feel like you don't really need to die, but you're going to play in that in-between area and just survive and get a ton of healing off. Uh, but for the most part, Teleport Blink is good enough just because Guan Yu has such a long CC immunity on his ult. Um, so yeah, another character stay gonna, still going to be strong after the Tuesday patch. Doesn't rely on like Soul Eater or anything like that. So I don't know if you guys can hear the background. Odin's chewing on his bone. Um, but yeah, so that was Guan at number two. And then for some honorable mentions before we get to our number one, uh, Hades going to be an honor mention right now. I just think that the physical build is so strong that I don't really want to put any magicals in like the top three or top five. Um, just because Glad Shield's so strong. Bluestone's still really strong. Uh, Manticore Spikes is actually a little bit stronger on physicals usually, just because they're going to be in that melee range area where they're actually going to be picking up the spikes as they CC the character, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Hades is still pretty strong. He has two builds that you can go. You can go the full damage build with Bancroft, which both, both builds you're going to start the same. It's basically just uh, tier two Bancroft with a teleport and two health potions. So I'll show you the full damage build first. You're going to be going Bancroft, and this build you're going to be going when um, 
you have like another frontliner on your team or maybe you feel like you're comfortable on the character you know your limits and everything like that you can go full damage and uh still feel like you're able to engage and not be too much of a detriment to your team as a full damage soul laner um so yeah i recommend this build when you're feeling pretty confident in this pick and then i round out the build with like a mantle or something just because you have so much uh damage in the rest of your build and this will actually make you kind of hard to kill late game just because of your prots from your ult and your damage mitigation plus these prots and the cc effect that it has and of course another thing that's going to make you hard to kill is actually the bancroft's glyphs which is bancroft's claw you kind of want to upgrade it to bancroft's claw whenever you can even do it at the beginning of the game but i usually do it after my warlocks or my typhons and then that's when i'm feeling very strong keep in mind you do have poly in this build part of the reason hades is so good right now is because of claw and poly they just buffed uh poly so make sure your auto attack at canceling after your ability so you can get some poly procs to really increase your damage um so yeah that's the full damage build and then the kind of more bruiser build is you're still going to be going claw because i think claw is still very strong on this character going into a breastplate i like to go into a void stone because we're going more of that bruiser style like i said into a manticore um Notice in that last build, I didn't have a starter item upgrade. You can fill in a starter item there if you would like, but I still think... I actually think some of the items right now in Smite are just super strong and where you don't even need to go and upgrade. Um, but if I were to, with something like this, I'd probably go like a Pendulum of Ages into the um, Spirit Room. If I can throw it in. And then I would upgrade my Claw to... Or my Talon into a Claw. I hate this freaking... UI, whatever. There you go. Um, you should have enough power with a build like this. You have full CDR, and you should have enough power where you'll actually get some value out of the Bancroft class. So yeah, that is Hades. You can also double stack on Hades. He has a lot of different things you can go on him. Honestly, you can't really go too wrong with his builds. Cthulhu's up next. I think this character is very strong, and with Guan Yu being in the meta, Cthulhu's a classic Guan Yu counter. You can either go Conduit, or in most scenarios, you're going to be picking this character in like a Guan Yu or into like a healing comp. I recommend going Tainted, Tier 1 Pythags, and with this start, you can get a Chalice plus a Health Potion, just so you can be really cozy in that laning phase, and of course, go Teleport. Um, rush into that Pythags, and now with Tainted and Pythags Rush, you're pretty mana hungry, so keep in mind, like I always say, you can invest into that permanent... Uh, mana potion across the entire game just get an earring put it on your ear be feeling good and nice and stylish for the rest of the game and of course you're going to be feeling good because your mana is going to be topped off most of the time um but coincidentally you're going into a breastplate or contagion if they have ant or if they have healing and part of the reason you'd pick this character in my opinion especially in a guan yu is you're going tainted into contagion and this is really strong you're sort of controlling the healing if you will but you're gonna be you're gonna be healing from tainted you're gonna be healing from lifesteal on pythax so your team be doing that <clears throat> into a manticore now Part of the reason I think Cthulhu is really strong right now is his base kit procs this three times. If you fear them with your one, that's a Manticore proc. If you root them with your two, that's a Manticore proc. Your stun slash like push away on your three also procs your Manticore. And then every knock up in your ult procs Manticore. So tons of Manticore uh, procs. And the cool thing about it is when you get your extra health in Cthulhu ult, you're going to be doing tons of damage because it's based off of that with the Manticore proc. So just crazy value on Manticore. And then of course I like to go a Mail of Renewal here because that also procs off your maximum health. So when you get a million newer proc in your ult, it's insane. You're still controlling the healing. Upgrade to a Tainted Amulet. Most games, I like Tainted Amulet just because you have Contagion, Anti-Heal. You're basically, you can go for the Tainted Breastplate and just basically control all of the healing. But I really like going this because it gives you more Magical Prot than Physical Prot. And the rest of your build so far, you don't really have a dedicated Magical Defense item. And then last item, another item that procs based off of your maximum health is Bulwark of Hope. You can throw that in the end. Or go the Heart Ward Glyph. That is also highly recommended, like I've been talking about. That'll give you a ton of physical prots as well, or magical prots. Um, but yeah, and if, of course you can go like Anemian if you need that, Spectral if they have crit, yada, yada, yada. And sometimes as this last item, especially because you got a magical defense item and Tainted Amulet, you can go for a Divine Ruin. Then you'll have basically 100% anti-heal on your own, and Cthulhu is really easy, uh, really good at proccing it. They can do that in a team fight pretty simply. Plus, this item is getting buffed on Tuesday. All the flat pen items for mages are getting buffed, so that's really strong. And whenever you're Cthulhu and you're diving, you don't want the ADC to be healing off of you with their life steal when you're just like running at them in your ult. Um, so usually, when you go like a divine ruin, have a little bit of anti heal, a little bit of damage, you actually out trade them, and they can't just sit there and shred you down um, without being threatened. So. Last honorable mention will be Ratatasker. I think this character drops off a little bit next patch because Soul Eater is getting nerfed, but like I said, I still think he is going to be viable. Of course, we're going Thick Bark, Acorn every single game. I think it's very, very wrong to never go to ever go anything other than this on this character in the Soul Lane. It's just so strong with Bluestone. Of course, you will not be able to rush it at the beginning of the game. You want to go uh, that plus Tier 1 Soul Eater. We'll have to see. Like I said, I've been saying 
whether it's going to be viable, but yeah, four health potions and a teleport. I do think you don't necessarily need teleport on this character. It just allows you to hyper farm, get to that mid to late game where you're basically a hyper carry coming from the solo lane. It can easily impact the game. And plus, if you TP, get a little bit of pressure and walk over and ult over to like a mid fight or a scorpion fight, you're going to be feeling pretty dang good affecting the map early on. So soul eater into glad shield, you know, this is a tried and true build. Another thing, Manticore is still strong in this character as well, so that's a nice little item you can throw into the build, plus the earring if you want to go that. Oni Hunters or Genji is really up to you, and then go into a Spirit Robe, upgrade into Bluestone Brooch, of course. Now, keep in mind, this build, you're actually lacking a little bit in the physical part, prot department, so, you know, be a little bit careful if they have, like, a double auto attackers in their physicals, double hunter, or just like a Nem or something like that, you can be a little bit tankier in the physical department. So um, maybe substitute out the Spirit Robe for like a, a Nemean or a um, maybe like a Midgardian, anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. And then of course go TP Blink. You can also go TP Beads on this character. Of course, if they have a lot of CC, you want Beads, but Rack can get away with Beads more than other characters that uh, want to go Blink just because he can ult into every fight and dash at people, and with his low CDs, he can kind of just do whatever he wants in a fight, and he'll always have his dash to get back out. Um, so yeah, that was Rat for the last honorable mention. And coming in number one, we have King Arthur because his build is not getting affected at all going into the next patch. He is still very, very strong. Again, maybe the personal bias here, but that goes, that always is the case with these top five lists and tier lists, you know. If you feel like Arthur is maybe number three or number four for you, that's fine. But he doesn't have a single lane that he loses um, dominant in the early, mid, and late game. And just really still going to be strong next patch with the build. Uh, this is one character that I actually just go Chalice plus a bunch of health potions on. I think it's really, really strong to do this and kind of opens up... Uh, you know your build a little bit for what you want to do um but still go teleport blink every single game i do not recommend ever going teleport beads on this character even if they have a lot of cc the way you need to play this character is just get your charge ult late game and save it for their important ccs and you'll immune everything and be able to uh own in a team fight um so go Sob first on this character because he has no sustain in his kit, unlike Osiris, who doesn't have sustain in his kit, but just gets so much from Destal. You do want to have uh, Sob first on this character, and you still want it next patch. Sob did not get nerfed enough going into Tuesday, so keep that in mind. Of course, Glad Shield next because that's one of the best items in the game right now. And speaking of the best items in the game right now, Manticore up next, which Arthur procs very often with his stuns on his ult, his knockup on his two, his charged ult, all proc it, and of course you're going to be doing a lot of damage with that. Then you're going to want to get some magical defense. Now at this point, I actually would go Heartwork glyph on this character just because i have no dedicated magical defense item right now and i want to be able to be able to get enough from this item right here this will actually probably give you like like i said 100 magical prots at this point which is just so strong with the rest of the build of course upgrade blue bluestone into bluestone brooch and then probably round out the build with like a, a spirit robe or a nemean if you really need to worry about their uh, auto attackers and yeah you'll be feeling super super duper strong with this like i said blink most games teleport blink um basically always i highly recommend that don't try and go beads on him unless you're a noob at this character and you feel like you really really need it uh, but yeah that's king arthur at number one and that's basically it so those are my top five with honorable mentions if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments below i'll try and answer you guys and uh, let me know what you guys have been having success with, as always. So, yeah, I'm excited for the new patch. A lot of people are hating on the new patch, and I think it's unnecessary. I think people just kind of have, like, a reverse Stockholm Syndrome with Smite right now, where they feel like they're obliged, forced to play it, when they're really not. I feel like people are just, you know, they're just not enjoying it because they're burnt out on the game, not because the game itself or the balance changes aren't good, if that makes sense. But I don't know. Maybe you guys disagree. But, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two from this. Enjoy farming your rank games with these characters and these builds and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out stay safe and healthy as always Bye.